Before we get into the video, I just want to take a moment to say that I highly recommend you sticking around to the end to see the finished results. I know that this video is a bit longer than usual, uh, but this art project turned out to be a lot better than I thought it would. Now I'm also asking you to stick around to the end because I know I lose a lot of viewers in the intros, um, and this intro is especially bad. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I recommend that you not even watch the intro and you just go straight to the shooting portion. Um, I'll leave a, a timestamp like right up here or uh, maybe right down here so you can skip the intro. But again, I highly recommend just sticking around to the end. And then one last thing, um, at the request of a viewer um, or two, I went out and got a lapel mic um, to improve the audio because I know that's one of the major improvements I needed to make. So thank you for the feedback. All right, let's get into this. Okay class, welcome to Painting with Giorgio. My name is Giorgio. In order to become a painter, you must become one with the paint. You do not paint the canvas. The canvas paints you. If you want to paint a bush, you must become a bush. If you want to paint a sailboat, you must become a sailboat. Oh good, I just want to paint a self-portrait, so becoming me should save some time. <laughs> you can only become you if you know who you are. Oh, I definitely know who I am. Ha! <laughs> Let me see. This is not you. This is not anyone. How would you know? You just met me. I don't have to know who you are to see that you are a lousy painter. Hey, you don't have to insult me. I personally think this looks pretty good. Pretty good? <laughs> maybe for a three-year-old. Well, maybe I'm just at the wrong angle. That's better. And maybe I just need a better brush. Can I borrow one of yours? A true artist uses what is available to them. You must use what is at your disposal. What's available to me, huh? Well, if you say so. You're right. This looks just like me. Mr. Giorgio? Uh, Miss, Mr. Giorgio? <laughs> so, I want to try a little experiment here. Painting with guns. I have this little contraption set up right here. Uh, there's three different canvases and I'm going to put one vial of paint in the middle, shoot that vial of paint, and with the splatter that it creates, um, I want to see what kind of abstract art I can come up with. And I'm going to go through one vial of paint at a time with a different caliber each time. And uh, we're going to start with a 22 and work our way up. I think the highest caliber I have is a 308. Um, well, actually, technically, I guess a 12 gauge slug I, I also brought out. And so we're just going to see what happens and uh, should be a good time. And I'm going to go ahead and start with, with purple because royalty, you know, why not? Let's go. So to start things off, uh, we're going to use the 22 out of this Smith & Wesson Victory um, that I kind of recently put together. It's still going through the kinks, so it might jam, but we'll find out. First, I'm just going to get some shots on target and uh, see exactly where the point of impact is because I definitely want to hit that vial uh, with the first shot as, uh, I guess, precise as possible. So here we go.
Should be one more round in here. Let's shoot the paint. Uh, one more round. Let's see here. Nope. Let's see, one kink. But let's see what happened. So I might have grazed this. No, actually. Here, take a look at this. I got. I think that's the entry, and this is the exit. I'm going to try and shoot it one more time, see if I can get a little more splatter out of it. One more shot with the 22. A little better. That was actually a pretty good hit, um, right there, right above the uh, the uh, red label. It says 59 milliliter, and that's the entry. Then the exit. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's right there. I'm actually gonna stick with the purple and uh, move up a caliber um, to see if we can get a little more splatter. And uh, the next caliber is gonna be a 22 magnum. All right, so I put the uh, purple vial back up and. We're going to shoot a 22 mag out of this uh, Caltech CMR 30. I'm going to take some shots real quick. Just make sure it's on target. Um, shooting some CCI Maxi Mag. shooting pretty low um, I'm only about 10 yards away from the target so I think the scope sighted in for like 50 yards so I gotta aim high all right let's go oh, yeah way better Next up, I got kind of a mustard yellow, and I'm uh, going to go put that over, and we'll shoot it with a 9mm. Alright, so next up, 9mm, and I'm going to use the Smith & Wesson M&P 9 Pro as a 5-inch barrel, so should add a little extra velocity, maybe a little more splatter. Splatter is what we're going for. Let's see what happens here. Um, I'm going to go and take some shots first. Oh man, I might have hit that high because I saw the uh, the uh, cap, the white cap, just uh, shatter and go everywhere. Let's take a look. So yeah, <laughs> what I thought. Um, I'm probably gonna get paint all over my fingers by the end of the day. But uh, yeah, I hit the cap, uh, the very top. So most of the paint's still in here. I'm gonna put it back up there and. Uh, Shoot it again. Aim a little lower this time. All right. Second try with a nine millimeter. I don't know. So, actually, this came out pretty good. Um, it looks really cool down there. You'll see it in a second. But I hit right there, and I uh, hit a little bit higher than I wanted to, but definitely towards the middle of the vial, so or the canister. 
Um, so we're going to move on to, let's see, a 9mm. I think I brought out 357. Let's do that. So next up, 357. I'm going to use the uh, Taurus 605. And I'm not exactly sure what kind of rounds these are. Uh, this gun was actually taken off my uh, bedside nightstand. And uh, these rounds have been sitting in there for about a year. It's about time to you know, switch them out. So I'm going to go and shoot these ones. But there's some sort of a crazy looking hollow point. And I'm going to take three shots at the steel target. hit pretty high. Yeah. Whoa, look at that. We got a lockup. Weird. All right. All right, here we go. I was hitting a little high. I guess I got to aim sort towards the bottom there. Oh my gosh. Again, I'm pretty sure I hit the cap. Let's see here. Definitely hit the cap. All right. All right, one more, one more. If I miss this, then <laughs> we'll move on. Well, I hit it. I don't think there was any splatter, though. Yeah. Forget this. <laughs> this is not good for precise uh, shooting, even at 10 yards. This is really more of a three to seven yard gun. So let's move on. All right. So I got the green uh, paint vial set back up and we're going to shoot with a 45 out of this small package right here. SOS Loke DJL. That's what he says. Damn it. This is a Foxtrot mic. Um, I don't know exactly. I guess FM 45. And it, uh, I put this uh, Sylvan Arms folding uh, stock adapter. And uh, first I'm just going to take some shots and see exactly where we're hitting. Alright, I think we're hitting a little low. Try and hit the paint, see if, uh, well first, just want to check this camera. Yeah, still recording. I always forget if the other camera's recording. Alright, here we go. Oh! <laughs> yeah, that got it. I think I got one more round here. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Sylvan Arms adapter. Okay, man. Started to uh, unfold itself. That's not good. But, anyways. So, check this out. This is actually pretty cool. Um, here's the first one I got. Here's the one that was sitting on the bottom, so it's got these big old globs of paint on it. And then this one, is it this one? Actually, I think it was the first one I showed you, but it's like a little bit of shrap mail here and there. But for the most part, that is pretty cool. Uh, oh, no, it was this one. So actually, you can kind of see on the back here, um, there's 
maybe a little piece of the cap or something like that um, went straight through this, but I still think it looks pretty cool. All right, I'm going to set up three more canvases, uh, three more colors of paint, and move it up in caliber. Uh, we're going to probably do some rifle rounds now. So next up for color, uh, let's do a little orange. So before we move on to rifle rounds, uh, I want to do one more uh, pistol caliber, and uh, that's going to be a 9mm out of this uh, Freedom Ordinance FX9, and uh, I've got a Hollow Sun uh, red dot on here. So let's go ahead and take some shots, just shooting again a uh, tool of ammo, nothing special. Seeing this out, it just broke my target. All right, I think it's shooting a little low at this distance. Uh, so I'm gonna aim right for the cap and we'll see what happens here. Ooh. I hit the cap, of course. Actually, I didn't hit the cap. I hit right on top. So I'm going to aim a little bit lower, but I'm going to set this back up because uh, there's still a lot of paint in here. All right. One more shot here. Yeah, that did it. And just to empty off the uh, magazine. Oh yeah, love this gun. So to complement the orange, uh, I got some gray here. All right, so to go along with the uh, gray, we're gonna shoot it with a 223. And this is a PSA uh, home build, I guess. It's a uh, 10 and a half inch barrel. And I'm gonna be using some cheap uh, Tula, this might be Wolf, I'm not exactly sure. But basically just some cheap steel cased ammo and let's see how it does. First, like usual, take some uh, shots on target, see exactly where it's hitting. Oops, safety. Yeah, it's definitely hitting low. Such a pleasure to shoot. All right, so it's hitting low and a little to the right. I think I need to uh, re-zero this, but let's go for the uh, gray paint. <laughs> I exploded that. Or at least I knocked it off. Yeah, that was a good hit. Right in the middle there. Um, I'm going to shoot it one more time because I think that round, it was going so fast, it just went right through it. And uh, I'm going to try and get a little more splatter if I can. All right, here we go. Oh, that was the last round. All right. One second. One more round loaded up. Alright, so to go with the orange and gray, we're going to use some blue. Alright, so to shoot the uh, blue paint, I'm going to use the 7.62x39 out of an SKS. Oh yeah, this is a uh, Chinese SKS. And I'm going to be shooting some steel cased, uh, I think it's made by Max Tech. It's not a Tula or a Wolf ammo, it's just uh, some other kind of cheap brand. Uh, Max Tech is not too bad. Uh, it's pretty good for low budget stuff but it's gonna take a few shots and see where it's hitting good Lord. <laughs> am 
might knock over my target with this next one. Alright. So it looks like it's shooting a little low. I mean, they're all shooting low, of course, because I'm only about 10 yards away. I know you're not supposed to shoot steel with a rifle caliber at 10 yards. So if I die, then uh, you all will see how it happened. All right, anyways. Blue paint coming right up. Dang, I grazed it. Dang, I grazed it. There's actually some pretty good splatter. Um, but I did graze it just right there on the side. I'm going to try it one more time. All right, here we go. Round two, blue paint. 762 by 39. <laughs> uh, I don't see a paint vial anymore. <laughs> yeah, that came out pretty good. Uh, let's just go ahead and empty this off. It should just be like one more round in here. Here we go. Empty. All right. This is some straight up Jackson Pollock stuff. So here's one of them. That came out really good. And then the other two, um, there's a big splatter on that one. And that one, you can't really see a lot of gray, but I think that one right there came out pretty good. So looking pretty good. I'm starting to lose some daylight, so we're going to set up the last three uh, as quick as possible and uh, try and finish her off. All right, so you saw this coming. Good old-fashioned red, or as they like to call it, scarlet. And for the red, we're going to go back to some 223, but from a bolt action, uh, this right here is a Mossberg MVP. Um, it has a 16-inch barrel, and the coolest thing about it is that it takes AR-15 mags. So you can put a uh, hundred round beta mag in your bolt action rifle if you want to. But shooting some uh, PMC um, 55 grain. Like usual, gonna take a few shots, see if I'm on target. Yeah, yeah shooting low. Shoot the uh, the red paint. Dang it! I uh, might have to redo that. Dang it! That was actually a pretty good shot, um, right there on the top. If I hit a little lower, then hopefully it'll uh, create a little more splatter. One more time. And uh, just like an AR-15, last round hold open. All right, so next up, uh, I got some yellow on there. And shoot the yellow, we're going to move all the way up to a 308. And this is a C-308 made by, I guess it's Century Arms. I'm not exactly too sure. Um, yeah, Century Arms. C-308. Here we go. Um, I've been having some mag issues with this, so if it doesn't run, then... That's why. And uh, I'm not going to be shooting steel at 10 yards with this. Uh, I may be stupid, but I'm not that stupid. So just going to take some shots and see exactly uh, maybe if I can hit this on the first try. Uh, it's probably shooting low, so I'm going to just aim high. There we go. Yeah, I got it. Um. <laughs> uh, let me just finish this off here. Yep, a little jam. A little jam Ola. Let's see here. Jam, jam, jam. Nope. 
don't even think it's picking up the round. That's crazy. And last but not least, to shoot the blue paint, I've been uh, saving something for the end. I just picked this up. I haven't fired one single round through it yet. It is the Black Aces Tactical uh, lever action 12 gauge shotgun, uh, specifically the Pro Series L. That's a bunch of words that mean nothing. <laughs> but I'm gonna probably do a review of this gun at some point. Um, but like I said, this is going to be the first shots out of it. And hang on one sec. We're going to be shooting this stuff. This is a three inch slug um, or a three inch shell um, shooting a slug at 1760 feet per second. This thing is screaming out of this uh, shotgun right here. So first shots, I'm just going to shoot the steel, see where it's hitting. Oh man, lever actions are so cool. Alright. That was one of the dumbest safeties ever. I'll show that in maybe another video. Here we go, first shot. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's actually a pretty nice trigger. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Alright. Back to our regularly scheduled program. Shit, that kind of rattled my, uh, my, my noggin. Alright, so. I knocked the heck out of that steel target. It fell over. I'm just going to take a, a shot at the paint. It looked like it was uh, shooting maybe a little to the left. So, I'm going to aim right. But, uh, elevation-wise, it was pretty good. So, here we go. Uh, needless to say, I don't think the canvas has su survived. <clears throat> Did I say the canvases didn't survive? Um, no, they actually survived. They came out really good. Uh, I'll show you here in a second. But uh, that paint um, vial is obliterated. I see little pieces of it. Um, I'm pretty sure it was a direct hit. But I got some paint all over my hand. This sucks because I don't want to get it all over my guns. <laughs> Alright, I wiped it off a little bit. I just want to finish off, I think there's three rounds left. I loaded it with five. This holds six rounds, plus one in the chamber, so seven total. But I only loaded five because that's what comes in a box of slugs. Whoops. So, should be three more. Here we go. There we go. First five shots out of the uh, Black Aces Tactical Pro Series L. And that barrel is hot. Holy cow. I just almost burned myself. All right. All right. So I just want to show you all the uh, remnants of this little art project from today. Just follow the paint. Follow the paint trail. There's some blown up vials right here is actually the uh, last canvases that we did they came out pretty darn good and keep following the paint trail there is paint everywhere and then here is the target stand that I knocked over but check out this shot right about there. That's that slug. And that thing put a perfect circle in that AR-500 uh, steel target. And as you can see, wrapping up here tonight, the sun's going down. We have got a beautiful sunset. Oh, look at that sun. All right. 
Let's get back home and we'll take a closer look at the art that we have created using guns. All right, uh, we're back at the house and here it is. Um, I'm just glad I was able to get all nine canvases back without ruining them. So first off, um, I'm not gonna pretend to know what I'm talking about here. I don't have any kind of official art education or art background, but if I had to take a guess, uh, I'd say this is definitely some abstract art, subjectively, of course. It was uh, really quite the surprise to see how this project turned out. Um, at first, I was gonna separate each individual canvas as its own piece um, until I saw how good they looked together. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I'm going to keep this all together as one piece. Um, probably put a backing uh, behind it and possibly frame it, but it's, uh, it's going to go up on my wall. So I just want to say a few things about the individual canvases. Um, first of all, this, the middle ones is where the paint canisters were sitting on top of. Um, so like this one has a lot of, a lot of, uh, or just some big globs of paint right here where the canister fell over and poured out the paint. And then this one right here has, you know, it's, it's like 95% covered in paint. Um, but there's also some things like, you know, right here, you can see there's a plastic piece, uh, from where the cap shattered. And I think there's like this one right here also has a little plastic piece right there. If the camera's picking that up, but aside from just paint being on here I mean there's definitely some depth to some of these like with these globs here you can kind of get almost like a 3d uh, effect going on and I think you can see things in the various paintings uh, for example I think I see like a cat over there um, this I kind of think looks like the face of a donkey um, you can see the universe violently imploding on itself as we realize that Matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration, that we're all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There is no such thing as death. Life is only a dream, and we are the imagination of ourselves. Oh, look, a birdie. So, anyways, um, obviously, the larger the caliber, the bigger the splatter, especially with the slower moving uh, rounds like 9mm, 45, and, of course, that 12-gauge slug. Uh, I'd also like to do a part two with like a camo color combination and then also maybe a part three, and part four, and so on uh, with various colors and various calibers. Um, I, th I think it would be pretty cool also to do like one single color but with different shades of that color. All calibers uh, worked really well as a matter of fact except for the 22 long rifle. 22 mag was actually pretty good. That's where a lot, all, pretty much most of this purple came from. Um, but the 22 long rifle, if I do any future projects, I'm definitely going to skip that. Go straight into the 22 mag, if not higher than that. But anyways, um, I just want to say, because I know this video has already gone on way too long, that I hope you all enjoyed this and uh, possibly got something out of it. Uh, I know I sure did. And... Uh, Thanks for watching.